I'm literally in a tree. Like literally, look at this. I am in a tree for today's Race to Victory Strike Tower. Now, I'm gonna show you guys probably how to do this one pretty easily, but there's more to today's video than just a strike tower, so stay tuned after I defeat the strike tower to learn maybe a little trick for your day-to-day -day play that will help you become better or level up quicker or a stronger Jurassic World Alive player in this game. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just now looking at this for the first time. It looks like a 25, I think that's Charlie, a 26 Delta and a 27 Blue. These dinosaurs are all going to be faster than you unless you're running Velociraptor, but Velociraptor is not really strong enough to do a whole lot with this. What I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to just try to slow it down with Thagomizer or Slowing Impact or Slowing Rampage, if there's even a Slowing Rampage, and go from there. That is going to be my entire strategy for this tower. I think it's just the one step if I don't fall out of this tree. It's actually a, a nice little tree. It's all perched up here for me. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is, I don't know. The first thing I'm gonna do is take out Kulasuchus. Kulasuchus is one of, it's getting a new hybrid, that's what it is. I knew for some reason Kulasuchus sounded important. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to slow down my opponent. They bring out blue. I barely survived that. And by barely, I mean I just barely survived that. Which is really going to completely damper anything that I was trying to do. I'm gonna get knocked out here, so my plan is to lessen the blow that blue is able to do for my next dinosaur, and that is gonna be Stegosaurus. I legitimately think I'm probably going to lose this tower. What I'm going to do is, Oh, I had the speed advantage there, okay. And I should have the speed advantage as long as I'm not knocked out with my Stegosaurus here, which is the nice thing about Stegosaurus. The sad thing about Stegosaurus is 300 damage is not gonna get things done. This does not look good at all. Which means I'm basically going to come down to, um, Maybe should have taken this a little more seriously. Like I said, I, you know what? I'm not even near the strike tower. So if I lose here, it's going to have to be a hike back and then you're gonna get part two from my car. But I'm going to break out Brachiosaurus here. I, I, I honestly don't think Brachiosaurus at level 15 can take out all of these dinosaurs. Um. I honestly hope Superiority Strike can knock him out. That I, if, if I didn't get that knockout, I, I'm already in a world of hurry. If I didn't get that knockout, I was gonna be in a lot more trouble. But I think this is gonna set me up so that I can use Bellow right here. I definitely just wanna maintain my speed control. Got a little bit of a shield here. Priority, I can go Superiority Strike on the next turn to clear this 50%, damn, this isn't. Now, this is already a lost cause, I can tell you. No good, no good. But the way that you beat this tower is use dinosaurs that are higher than level 15. Honestly, this was one of the most embarrassing towers I've ever done. Like I got one knockout, one. I should have looked at the dinosaurs, I brought like a limp noodle to a gunfight, and that. So what I hope you guys learn from this is, and you can see how far away I am from that strike tower. So then the redo on this is going to be for my car because I'm not walking all the way back up here again, but I'm gonna walk over there, grab some coin for my troubles, and then I'm basically going to lose 200 hard cash because I did not take this seriously. Lucky for you guys, I'm actually avoiding sitting in my car and playing, and as you can see, it's gonna cost me 200 hard cash in order to battle this because I was stupid. Um, still going to, the, the main problem that I have is 
that any dinosaur that I ever use is already at level 20. And I, I try to do videos that show dinosaurs that people probably don't have, or, or that actually, that people probably do have. And sometimes it just doesn't go quite right. Also, I legit didn't even look at the dinosaurs that I was going up against. I thought they were like level 21, not level 27. So that was a huge difference as well. So I've beefed up my team significantly, but again, not, not anything over level 20 except for Stegoceratops, which is level 21. And that's actually what I'm gonna lead with because I can slow down and then I have the possibility of stunning for two turns. And I'm gonna be able to tank this first hit here. So 906 damage is a far cry from taking out all but 200 of my dinosaur's health. Then I'm just gonna go hopefully hit stun stun really want the stun fest here there's one stun now if i can knock blue out remember blue does have the 10 percent armor but it looks like my strike is going to be enough to take it out the crit always helps super easy much different than last time around that's going to save me for a stun and then a slow and then potentially another stun i, I don't use stegoceratops quite a lot so I'm not sure the exact delays and cooldowns on everything. Yeah, that's a stunning. Oh, see, I don't even have, I can't even go for my slowing impact just yet, which is a bummer. It would have been nice if that had come off of cooldown there for me, but most likely getting knocked out here to a pounce. Not a big deal. I'm already up 1-0 and let's see. I don't ever use spiky potato. So I'll put in spiky potato. Those are words that if you don't ever use a dinosaur, don't use it in this. And honestly, like, I'm just gonna go for the priority instant distraction. On, on these towers, there's no need to get cute. I know I get cute, but I'm creating content. Not good content sometimes, but I'm creating content. So there's a difference there. But for the most part, there's no reason to get cute. Break out your best dinosaurs, go for the throat, try to win this tower straight up. I'm just trying to show you what helps. So if you have other dinosaurs that are near the same level, then you can, God, and this spiky potato is gonna be amazing for this because I can alternate between instant distraction and uh, instant invincibility. Spiky potato may be the way to go because you're rarely gonna take a full throttle hit. It's going to take you a little while. Like, can I just keep alternating here? Is that is that how this works? Is this a one-man shop here? If, if you have spiky potato at any level? No, I can't just, I can't just alternate between them, but here's the good news. What I can do is I can slow them down with Thagomizer <laughs> and get the speed advantage and then do a couple more swaps here and this should be, this should be victory. So I'm gonna go instant distraction. Not doing a whole lot of damage, quite honestly, but slowly but surely. Isn't that the story of the, hortus and, uh, the tortoise and the hare? I don't know what a hortus is, but the tortoise and the hare. God, this is pretty nice. So if you have spiky potato, it doesn't have to be level 20, I don't think. You can probably take this out much easier just lead with this with uh what did, well, i don't even know ankynotrosaurus eventually you're going to run out of the alternating but by that point it will have already taken out a dinosaur and a half there you go that's that is my best advice use spiky potato if you have it it doesn't have to be level 20 and i think if i'm not mistaken this is a themed incubator and it is so look for fast dinosaurs so we get out of this uh definitely need the coins thank you to the velociraptor dino little Kyrus, thank you very much or look meh charlie meh and blue I'm starting to accumulate quite a bit of blue DNA and Pyroraptor. Very good. 
All right, I'm going to get to my car and get out of here. And we're going to talk about a, a, something that I'm personally working on that can help you be better at Jurassic World Live. This trick that I want to teach you is not really even a trick. It's, it's how to become better at darting. And the reason why that is important, obviously, is because the better you dart, the more DNA you get, the more DNA you get, the quicker you level up dinosaurs that are good or create hybrids. And coming from me, this is like, really? Because I'm not the best starter. But something I've been working on for the past couple days is improving my skills darting. And the first tip that I want to give you is get within 50 meters I don't know what that is if you have it set up for feet. Get within 50 meters of the dinosaur that you want to dart. That's first and foremost. That's going to give you the maximum time available for darting your dinosaurs. If you have the IP, the maximum number of darts you can throw is 15. I've never actually thrown 16, but from what I understand, you won't be able to throw the 16th dart. It just won't let you. And there's a trick to this because when you get ready to launch a dart, there's a cooldown period between when you can launch the next one. Like you can't just tap, drop, tap, drop, tap, drop, and just constantly high speed throw darts. It doesn't work like that. So what you have to do is you kind of have to find that rhythm of how long can I hold the screen, let go before the darts go flying. And that is going to lead me into tip number two, which is on common dinosaurs. So honestly, the special event supply drops of this week are a great opportunity to practice tip number two and that is going to be don't worry about how much DNA you capture I know this sounds counterintuitive but practice on getting 15 darts out now let me just give you this one caveat this is with VIP if you don't have the VIP then it's not gonna work you, you can't get 15 darts because you don't have the extra time I don't I, 11 maybe 12 might be the maximum number of darts you can throw if you don't have VIP but whatever your maximum is, go for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on Eniosaurus here. And my goal is obviously to rack up as many DNA, as, as much DNA as possible. But my main goal is to drop 15 darts. Simple enough, right? It's actually not that easy. But once you get the hang of the timing, it actually becomes a lot easier. So my only real focus is hitting the very first one as a direct hit. And then my next focus is dropping 14 more darts. So here I go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and I didn't quite make 15 and the reason why I didn't make 15 is between like I think it was 7 and 8 I did not hold down long enough to let my dart recharge so I got 222 which isn't an exceptional total for a common dinosaur but as you start getting the hang of this it will come easier the next tip and here I'm gonna try it against a dinosaur that I really need Practice against commons. That's your tip number three. The reason why you want to practice against commons is because typically they only have two, sometimes they'll have three darting locations. The fewer number of places that you might have to hit on a dinosaur, the easier it's going to be to practice this. The more you practice you get, the better you will be when you get, say, a Brachiosaurus, where it literally could be on any side of the screen. Now with dinosaurs like Brachiosaurus, 15 darts probably isn't realistic because it's just going to take you too long to go from the tail to the head and then all the way back down, which you inevitably will do. Practice on commons, two spots on Dinochirus and Dinochirus, Dinochirus. And remember the first one, direct hit, and then we're gonna go for 14 more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and see I didn't even have time to do sixteen. Over three hundred, which is exceptional. And what you will find is as you start doing this, you'll realize that the harder you press down your screen, the faster your darts, your, your drone is going to move. 
and you'll learn how to finagle it just a little bit. Remember, I'm, I'm still learning how to do this efficiently, but there was at least one dart on there where I pushed down too hard and I went flying right by the head of the dinosaur, which actually kept me, I think it was a whiff dart anyways, but that kept my total from being higher and it made me have to backtrack a lot more. If you know where the darting spots are going to be on Dino Kyrus, I believe it's like the head in the back, you can set it up to go to the head, come back to the back, go to the head, and bounce back and forth between those. Now, I'm going to go after Tarbosaurus here for one more example, and Tarbosaurus is really difficult because it's, it's a herky-jerky move that this dinosaur has. So, getting off 15 darts is going to be imperative because it's going to be difficult to hit direct hits anyway, so you want to get more opportunities. So here we go, same as always. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and I just barely did not get the 15th dart off. The reason why is because, as you saw there, I let go of my, well, I don't even know if you guys can tell, but I let go of my trigger before the darts had reset. And if I had waited just a hair of a second longer, I definitely would have gotten all 15 darts off. So there you go, three tips to help you become better at darting. I hope between me botching the strike tower and showing you guys how to practice, because we talk about practice, these darting, you will become better at darting, accumulate more DNA, level up your dinosaurs faster, or create hybrids faster. That's all I've got for today, so until next time.